Greetings fellow Conquerors, this is Darkfire Slide, and welcome to a guide video. Today we're going to talk about builds in EU4, or at least the idea of builds. Um, typically more of like an RPG idea, but I figured that um, I found these while I was making a video where I was discussing whether or not quality was actually worth taking. And uh, this was kind of a takeaway of, of that video, um, but without being, this, is, this video is not going to be as long as that one was. That one ended up being 47 minutes because I talked about the entirety of the combat system. And I know that some of you are waiting for my hour-long EU4 special, but I wanted to get something out because I've been really busy with, with class um, as it's finals week. And, uh, and yeah, I wanted to get something out to you guys, and I don't, I don't think this is going to take very long. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's talk about some builds. So all of, all of these stats are going to be like calculated after applying the applicable policies from having all of the idea groups. Um, so just bear that in mind. So let's see. Let's start with the, uh, the the Napoleon. So I call this one the Napoleon because it's very much a thing you might take if you're France or if you just want to have like really high morale. Um, as we can see, it has a total of a 45% morale boost. That's coming from, uh, I believe, religious and quantity, as well as, um, I think it's quantity and diplomatic, not quantity, there's, there's, it might be quality and religious as well. Basically, you can get your base morale up to a 45% bonus, and the really crazy thing about this build is it's also going to have higher morale thanks to yearly army tradition from defensive and quality ideas. So, if you just want morale, like, more than anything else, this is going to be your build, and, and thankfully, if you if you go with this idea group build, you're also going to get a lovely 30% infantry combat ability, um, but you'll be at 105% discipline, which really isn't that bad. But um, overall, I think this is a really powerful um, like set. So the ideas that you're going to take from the Napoleon are going to be quality, innovative, religious, quantity, defensive, diplomatic, and you're going to have a morale advisor as well. Um, otherwise, this is going to be a 35% morale boost, which is still nice, but. Um, you, you can easily swap that morale advisor for a discipline advisor, and you'll be down 10% morale, but you'll have 110% base discipline, so, uh, take that as you will. Um, it's worth noting that you don't have economic ideas, which means you can't get, uh, weapon quality standards, the policy, which means you're not going to get that extra 5% discipline from that, but this is a build about morale, and, uh, the infantry combat ability plus the morale is going to make it really easy to shatter your opponents and, uh, stack wipe them, so... Um, all of these builds are available at Tech 22. I uh, don't know why I even have this on here, considering that th this is when all of these are available. But um, and it's going to take four policies to fill these out. Most of these are going to take four, except for um, the last one. But worth noting that this is going to be quite a drain on your Monarch points to actually like do this. So uh, also bear that in mind. But anyway, this is this is almost purely theory crafting, um, considering that you can't take uh, like administrative and humanists are almost not in any of these idea groups. Um, but anyway. So, yeah, I think the Napoleon is pretty strong. Um, another nice thing to note about it is it has a 60% uh, bonus to force limit when you combine, uh, I think it's quantity and diplomatic. Um, so you get 50% base from quantity and then another 10% from diplomatic means you can have, you know, 60% more troops is really nice. And you also get 50% more manpower from quantity, of course. Uh, the It's worth noting that as well that Defensive Ideas gives a 15% bonus, or has a chance to give a 15% morale bonus uh, from an event which is pretty disgusting, and uh, this group also has a 20% uh, base unit maintenance reduction, uh, which is also really, really nice. Kind of gives that Napoleonic feel of these, you know, massive armies and stuff. And uh, as I said, because of defensive and quality, this group will have extremely high morale. Um, and if you're playing as France or Prussia, that already gets like crazy high morale, um, you're going to be stack wiping like everything. This is a really nasty uh, combination for all those things. Because you just have so much morale that, like, the enemies are going to break really, really quickly because morale damage is, is modified by maximum morale. So the more maximum morale you have, the more morale damage you do, easier it is to stack white people. Anyway, let's move on to the second uh, build. I'm calling this one the Muscovite because it's built around just massing troops. So uh, total from the Muscovite, you get 25% morale, 115% base discipline, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, no infantry combat or combat ability of any kind, and uh, you get plus one to your general dice rolls from offensive ideas. The ideas for this group are going to be defensive, religious, quantity, offensive, a discipline advisor, diplomatic ideas, and economic ideas. This one only needs three policies, which is quite nice. Um, this is available at Tech 22. Uh, base, this uh, group, or this build, has a 70% force limit uh, bonus with 50% bon base manpower from quantity. 
And uh, with uh, diplomatic and economic ideas as the other two groups, you can raise this force limit up to 90%, which, as a side note, is 140% bonus force limit for Muscovy. Pretty terrifying. It's worth noting that this combo also has a 30% unit maintenance reduction base, uh, <coughs> which uh, I believe there are also ways to uh, lower that further. So um, really, really, really cheap troops and a really high force limit as well uh, to work with. Um, and it's also worth noting that with uh, offensive and economic, you can get artillery combat ability raised by 10%, uh, which is quite nice. And uh, if you took innovative ideas instead, you could also get uh, plus one to your siege speed and uh, siege modifier for generals, um, which are both really good in the late game. Um, next build, we have what I call the Swede, because I could very much see Sweden taking this and doing quite well. So, uh, total bonuses, we have a 30% infantry combat ability base, 120% discipline, uh, morale is just the base morale, and uh, you get plus one to your general dice rolls from offensive. So, the idea groups for this one are going to be offensive, quality, quantity, economic, innovative, diplomatic, and the discipline advisor. Uh, it's worth noting that you still get some morale from quality ideas, having a high army tradition, but uh, otherwise you really need to be careful when fighting nations that have been stacking morale, because you might get stack wiped despite having um, really high discipline and combat ability. Um, this build takes four policies, and of course it's available at Tech 22. Um, like the Muscovite, this combo has a 90% force limit after you uh, apply your policies with a 70% base force limit. Uh, you get 50% manpower from quantity, uh, which is always nice. Um, I feel like this is the strongest late game group um, because morale isn't as big of an issue in the late game. Um, and if you take more policies, you can get you know an additional 10% artillery combat ability. I think you could even get 20% somehow. Um, of course, that also makes it the most expensive group of the bunch, um, which maybe you know skews it in the favor of being the best late game group just because just because it has more policies. But um, anyway, yeah, this is quite a powerful group overall, I think. Um, but without further ado, let's go to the last group that I have, and uh, this is going to be the idea group I think a lot of people take when they play the game, or the like the, the general feel of what they think makes their military awesome. Uh, this is the Prussian, as I call it. Uh, the Prussian gives you 30% combat ability, 120% discipline, 25% base morale, and plus one to general dice rolls. This requires quality ideas, offensive, defensive, economic, innovative, diplomatic, and the discipline advisor. Um, your morale is going to be a lot higher than advertised because you have quality and defensive, so it's not just 25%, it's 25% plus the army tradition bonuses. Um, you only need three policies to make this work, which is quite nice, and uh, it's available at Tech 22, of course. Uh, this combo only has a plus 20% to force limit, and it has no manpower bonus, um, which is kind of scary. Uh, it's worth noting that this group ha will have the best in-class generals due to its enhanced army tradition and guaranteed pips from offensive. The double army tradition will, of course, always, you know, it will give you more morale, as I've said. And, uh, this has the highest base damage and morale damage of any group. Um, but when you fight against an enemy that has literally 70% more troops, um, you may just get overwhelmed with sheer numbers. Um, but I think this is a really cool idea group for Prussia and Sweden, especially since their militaries are already quite good. Um... It's worth noting that offensive and economic results in higher artillery combat, of course, which is uh, pretty good. And uh, this army can also has a good chance to get 15% bonus morale from either offensive or defensive ideas. Um, but expect to use a lot of mercs. Anyway, I hope these uh, I hope these builds were. <clears throat> I hope this was interesting. I hope you like the idea of, of like these builds. Um, you know, test test them out if you you know feel free uh, absolutely to use them. That's the whole reason I've. Uh, come up with them. Uh, I'm going to leave these on the screen for like a few more moments just so you can kind of uh, write them down because obviously this is going to take you a while to actually um, let these come to fruition. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of talk over it while I while I show these. So the um, the main reason I did this is because a lot of countries don't get really nice combat bonuses. I think uh, Saxony is a pretty great example of a country that like their only bonus is like 5% discipline. Same goes for like England. So, the nice thing about these builds is that um, these are going to be true, like, this is just, like, base, what you get from these builds. Um, whereas, like, you know, usually what other people do is they'll, like, play as Prussia, they'll take, like, weird idea groups and they're like, oh, well, my military is so great because I took this, and it's like, well, it's actually because you played Prussia. But, um, these builds are going to be, I think, useful for um, certain play styles, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's, it's worth noting as well, I didn't mention this, but, like, um, the Napoleon, the Muscovite, and I think... I think those are the only two, yeah. So so these two first groups are also going to have Deus Volt if you take religious ideas early, which is uh, pretty good depending on where you are in the world as well. Um, 
I'll go ahead and show the uh, last two policies as well, just so you can see the uh, the builds. But yeah, um, I, I hope that you guys find these useful. I hope that uh, this becomes like a thing for people who really want to build like a uh, you know good armies. And, and ironically, this may have been like the first like truly multiplayer based thing that I've created. For like, I, I could see people using these in multiplayer a lot more than like in single player. Ironically, but um, anyway, yeah, I. I I think these are quite good, and uh, it's, it's also worth noting that, like, with none of these groups can you take really administrative or humanist ideas without delaying your, uh, you know, military, as it were. So if you're building nothing but military, you basically have to take the ideas, like, almost in, almost in this order. Like, obviously, you can't take, like, multiple military groups in a row, but... Um, that being said, uh, I think that's all. I hope you, you know, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and... Uh, you know, again, my apologies for not getting out another episode of uh, Byzantium yet, but uh, I am working on it. Um, obviously, busy with school. But thank you guys for your patience, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.